Right, joining us now is Professor Klingiwe Mkize, the Deputy Minister in the Presidency for Women, Youth and People with Disabilities, to talk to us about the celebration of Women's Month, which of course starts today. The Presidency for Women, Youth and People with Disabilities has campaigns that offer programs for women throughout the month of August, but the sad reality is that girls and women in South Africa are, however, systematically left behind and their rights are violated on a daily basis, and we do know this. It's so good to have you in studio. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much, Lee, and good morning to the listeners as well. So the department um, within the presidency for women, um, youth and people with disabilities, I know there are a lot of plans for Women's Month, but what is the, the main focus and theme for this particular year? Well, it's reviewing what has happened over the 25 years from a legislation point of view, uh, the culture of human rights, empowerment, and of course how we have dealt with this uh, scourge of uh, gender-based violence. Yeah. And, and so with the new mandate, the way the department is, has been configured, we're not only looking at uh, gender inequalities and inequities, but also we're looking at the youth component in terms of education and skills, uh, empowerment through entrepreneurship and work placement, and of course, uh, persons with disabilities. Yeah. We're looking at what has worked and what has not worked and looking at where their strengths are. Yeah. Inclusion through yeah. education and the use of technology. Which is, is a big focus and a focus that I, I think so many women are grateful for. The opportunities when you look at South Africa compared to many other countries in the world, the opportunities for women are massive and they're absolutely wonderful. But our biggest problem and biggest blight to any female in this country is gender-based violence. And, and it's a huge worry when we move into Women's Month. What, from the department's perspective, are some of the things you'll be focusing on to try and reduce this rate? Well, we, you know, there's an immediate thing we have to do, is to follow through the presidential uh, summit on, on gender-based violence and femicide. We had a judge there, uh, Judge Meyer, supporting the president as well, who really made it clear that the judiciary, for the judiciary as well, it's not going to be business as usual. So we are, the, then there was a declaration signed. We have to follow through to look at the sexual offences uh, courts, whether they are functional yeah. at the level at which they are supposed to. We are following cases like uh, this uh, Cheryl Zondi case going on in, 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 in PE because it's talking to difficulties in the system to realize the objectives of the legislation and policies, but also looking at the emphasis of investments. Sometime this week I will meet with one of the CEOs from the UK who is partnering with one of the companies here. We are talking to them to say it's not enough to have a center where victims can phone through, but we need to partner with them also to say, as investors, there should be opportunities that are gender responsive and, and also developing entrepreneurs who can begin to be part of a value chain yeah. within these multinationals. Because that also is a preventative measure. An empowered woman is better equipped to deal with a, a difficult relationship and see that now the robot is amber or is going towards red and then make decisions. Yeah, and, and, and finally, because I know we're going to be speaking about this the whole month, and I'm, and I'm so glad about that, but the big issue as well, when you speak to women, and, and I love the sign celebrating Women's Month, but there's, there is, it feels like little to celebrate when, when so many women are going through these issues of domestic abuse and violence and rape and killing and femicide, and you go to the police and they are not helping, and that you feel that you can't actually go there because that's an area where you're under threat as well. Um, you know, bringing everybody together, together and in to discuss this issue, is it something that you as a department look at as well? Well, clearly our mandate is that we are not a standalone. We, we oversee a, a presidential program. Basically, it means we have that political advantage, the proximity to the highest authority in the land. But we have to oversee what is going on. I mean, as I'm sitting here, I know that what the Department of Transport is doing, environment, tourism for the month and all others. So we, 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 we have to consolidate, collaborate, and not work in silos so as to meet uh, the targets in the NDP as well as the Sustainable Development Goals. Right. 
but also the most important thing is also for young people to really talk to them about where we come from. Yeah. I know sometimes they will say, oh, no, 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 don't talk about 1956. But that suffering, if they internalize it, it's also a motivation for them not to take democracy for granted because they will lose it. Indeed. And, Indeed. and so to, to appreciate the pain and suffering, that struggles of women, which led to where we are. So that where they have opportunities, they work harder, they give their best in honour of those people who paved yeah. the way for them. Well, that's the 9th of August, of course, the culmination of this is Women's Month, but that, of course, being Women's Day in South Africa, looking back to those brave souls of 1956. Okay. Professor Shingiwe Mkiza, Deputy Minister in the Presidency for Women, Youth and People with Disabilities, talking to us about the celebrations for women this month and issues facing them. Thanks again. Thank you.